Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Stoked on Spokes. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all of this junk. What is this junk? This is what I carry on basically every bicycle ride I go on. So this is my every ride carry. A couple of disclaimers before I get started. This is what works for me and these are the things that I bring. If you can take one or two pieces from this kit and apply it to your setup, that's great. This is by no means a kit that you need to go out and ride your bike. You can do that with basically just your phone and a pump and maybe a multi-tool. This is what I carry on every single ride I go on, whether that's a commute to work, whether that's a mountain bike ride, whether it is a gravel ride. This might be found in the bottom of my backpack if I'm wearing a backpack or in any one of my frame bags on any bike. Last disclaimer before we get started, this is what works for me throughout the year. There is some things that are added uh, depending on the season, like for example, in the summertime, I will have bug spray and sunscreen. In the wintertime, I'll have more things like hot hands to keep my hands warm. So this is, for the most part, everything I carry throughout the whole year, regardless of the season. All right, let's get started from right to left. So on this far right-hand side, I have this. This is a Marmot running jacket, I believe. Don't really know the name, but it is a very thin running jacket. I use it as a windbreaker. Um, most people use rain jackets, that's cool too. What I like about this is uh, it packs down super, super small. I think even smaller than a rain jacket would. So I could fit it in like my handlebar bag. I could fit it in uh, the Oveja Negra chuck bucket. Um, it's just awesome. It packs down small, very, very light, and when it's breezy, like cold wind, it's awesome. It saves, saves you from being cold, especially for an activity like bike riding when you pick up speed, you get a lot of wind, that'll save you. Next up are my lights. I have a uh, Knight Rider front light, 850 lumens. Um, very good front light and the Planet Bike, just generic uh, rear light. I didn't actually used to ride with these if I knew I was going to be back before dark. Now I find myself always riding maybe a little bit further than I wanted to and I find myself in the dark most of the time. So I bring them even if I leave in the middle of the day. Um, and most of the time they're just mounted on the bike, especially this rear light. It's visible during the day, so it's good for that as well. All right, this next item is a tube. I'm not running tubeless yet. I think I will convert to tubeless. So a couple of the things here might switch around, but I will still carry a tube even if I run tubeless. A couple of Pedro's tire levers, and it's all held together with a Wally strap. Let's move to the tools. So this is an Avenir. Don't know if that's how you say it, Avenir? Avenir pump. I got this, this is my first pump I got when I started bike riding in 2011. I got it at a sports authority. <laughs> it was basically like a Dick's Sporting Goods, but just a different company. Turns out it wasn't as good as Dick's Sporting Goods, so they had to close. Wow, this is extremely hard right now. Uh, this just pops up to help you get a little bit more leverage on the pump. Around the pump, if you've seen the bike packing series, uh, you notice that I have some uh, Gorilla Tape. So not duct tape, Gorilla Tape. Pretty much the same thing as duct tape. I think it's a little bit stronger, but maybe that's just marketing at its best. Moving on, if you saw my bike packing series, you know that I carry one of these. It is a spoke wrench and it's just for that. It's a spoke wrench 
It is um, just in case I hit a pothole or anything like that. I don't like stripping the spoke potentially if I don't have the spoke wrench, trying to tighten or loosen a spoke with pliers. So I like to have it, it's not too heavy and it's small enough that it can just fit anywhere. So spoke wrench. Moving on over, this is I believe a yeah, toe peak um, chain breaker, chain tool. I actually haven't used this, haven't had to use this. I've had it for about eight months. Take it on every single ride, mountain bike or gravel. There's been a couple comments where someone asked me how this worked, if it performed well or bad, and I was just honest. I said I haven't used it. <laughs> Hopefully don't have to use it in the near future. The reason I carry a chain breaker by itself is because my beloved multi-tool, which I really, really like, this one right here, doesn't have one. And uh, instead of going out and buying a bigger multi-tool, I thought let's just have this chain breaker by itself. I think they perform better than the ones on a multi-tool, but that's just personal preference. All right, this is a Crank Brothers multi-tool. It's the M10. I like it. I like the colors. Uh, I'm a big fan of pink. And uh, yeah, it's been in my writing kit for about four years now. Three years? Four years. Something like that. Three years, I think. And what I love about this multi-tool that I had a problem with others is that the tools don't loosen. I've had so many multi-tools that the screws on the ends come loose and then these are just kind of flying around like and you can flick them and you're trying to get one to perform a task like your 2.5 and it's just like wobbling everywhere. This one has stayed strong from the beginning. I haven't even tightened the screws. It's just performed great. So highly recommend that tool. And my last bit of the tools is of course my patch kit. Again, I don't run tubeless yet. So I think that with time, this patch kit will turn into a tubeless patching kit. So a little bit different, but it'll just kind of swap places with that in this kit. All right, moving down to electronics. Um, let's start with the phone and headphones. Uh, headphones, just some Apple AirPods, really nice. I like, here's the thing, it doesn't have to be Apple AirPods. I highly recommend if you listen to music while you ride, some wireless headphones. The biggest reason for me is because this phone is massive, it takes great pictures. I like the phone as far as carrying it in a pocket, not going to work. So. Usually just put it in a frame bag or even in my fanny pack. Um, but yeah, just having a big phone in my pockets does not work for me. Any wireless headphone, highly recommend. All right, moving on to the phone, iPhone 8 Plus. Kind of wish I wouldn't have gotten the Plus. Uh, now, I like the ability to have a, a bigger screen when I'm hanging out, but in uh, practical terms, I wish it was smaller because it would just fit in places better, but I do do some gaming on it. So I like the screen for that. Next up is the Wahoo Element Bolt. This little guy is quite an amazing bicycle computer. Um, I usually, if I am going on a ride, I'll just turn it on, record the ride. I've mapped out some rides on Strava that I then plug in and go for them. I like it, I like, I, I really wasn't a big fan of cycling computers before this, this is my first one. I like tracking mileage, time, all those things is pretty cool to me now. When I first got into cycling, I was never really a fan of any of that. I just kind of wanted to ride. If I am riding on my gravel bike, it'll be on its mounts, on the bars. If I am riding my mountain bike, it will be most likely in my hip bag or backpack. All right, so all of these items that I've covered are things that I definitely bring on every single ride I go on. These items over here, well, with the exception 
of the last one. My camera and this tripod is something that I bring on a ride if I plan to record the ride. I don't always record every single ride I do. Sometimes I just want to go out there and ride and not record anything. So if I am going to choose to record it, I bring the Sony A5100. The reason I chose this camera is the price point. It is, if you can find it used, I bought this on Craigslist when I was living in Colorado for $230. And I think it retails for $500 with this lens. So you could buy it used and it was pretty pristine condition. It has, you know, the, the flip screen so you can vlog or record yourself. But uh, yeah, I also think the flip screen is helpful for when you want to prop it up somewhere to record your shot of you riding past it, but you can't get behind the camera to see. So it's not only just to vlog, but if you need to see your framing before you can shoot down the road and record, I think it's great. Yeah, highly recommend this camera if you want a cheap, well, relatively cheap camera with awesome image quality. If you watched my bikepacking Utah video, it was all shot on this and a GoPro. If you watched my bikepacking on the Kona Row video, it was all shot on this. Yeah, great camera. I'm trying out this new thing. It's called the Pedco UltraPod 2. Uh, used to have the Manfrotto, and I ran that quite religiously with this camera as my filming setup. But this is actually a lot lighter and a lot sturdier. I just added a Arca Swiss plate on the end just because all my tripods and my clips on my backpacks use Arca Swiss. So just had to change that up and it's good to go. Excited to really try this out and put it through its paces and see what I think of it. Like I said again, these are just two things that I would bring if I plan on recording. I might throw a GoPro in there and uh, something else like a gimbal. But if you move these two items out, this is what I bring on every single ride. All right, and last but not least, I have a couple of Band-Aids. I don't just bring a couple of Band-Aids. This is where I need your help. I don't have a suitable first aid kit. And I've gotten the comment in the bikepacking series videos if I take a first aid kit. Now I have a huge first aid kit for when I go backpacking or camping, but I think on the bike, I just want something small that has everything I need. If you have a first aid kit that you'd recommend, put it in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. This is my everyday or every ride carry. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it helped you out, remember to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel, and you like this kind of video for this kind of content, cycling content, consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Till then, remember to stay stoked on spokes. Peace.